Welcome to More Than Myths. Welcome. What you doing? Oh. Okay, then that's the drink. What you drink? Classic wine. Oh. Style. Doing some just some classic coolie. Yeah. I I don't think they're technically classic because they're margarita style. So yeah. no. oh, I need to get that flavor again. I miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish they did a whole pack of the mango habanero. Oh, this one's good. I wish they just that I had the whole pack of them. Whole pack to yourself. Hear us truly. We want a whole pack of mango habanero. Just like you know how Starburst did all pink. Starbursts. Yes. 100%. Give us, give us what we want, please. 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 Yes. Nice. <laughs> please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> I, we appreciate it. Holy. Mm. Try. Oops. Spoilers. Truly. <laughs> Truly. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, how are you? Um, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We recorded last week and then we had a horrible situation that our upload didn't work. It was a debacle. And then I you... logged in today and it's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... You called me when I was going into a cornfield and I was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> falling flat on my face because it was very dark. Breaking rules. Haley, and I needed a rule we... breaker. Oh, you know me. They had two teenagers standing at the entrance of the corn maze and they were like this corn maze was closed and there was people standing around and i was like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> and then i yelled out i was like i apologize i'm sorry i'm not mad at you and so we went around the side of the corn maze and entered from the side into from the a, corn maze from a side door yeah i just needed mm-hmm. a little corn maze this year that's all so we did a little i wonder corn why maze. it was closed so early uh because they are not open late they're only open mm. until like nine o'clock. And so they clear every, I know it's dumb. They clear everybody out. The corn maze. Uh, you got me. Cause they can't have people just roaming around their farm, I guess. I guess so. So did you guys go out the I main guess. entrance or did you have to leave the back way? You came in. We went out the main entrance. We went in the side and out the front. <laughs> wow. That's so bold. That's yeah. bold. Yeah, and she definitely turned around and watched us walk out. <laughs> and just smiled at us and was like, well, I mean, what is she going to do? She can't. I know. Weirdy, She's weirdy a little baby. She was right. also like 16 years old. What is she going to do? Yeah. Not that we would be mean to her, but. No. You know, what is also, but what is she going to do against. Grown ass adults breaking adults the rules. Breaking the rules. Nothing. Which is, so that's maybe a pretty soft banned. rule to break. That's a pretty soft rule. If I was like, I don't know, breaking a hard rule. I don't know what a hard rule is, but you get what I'm saying. You know, no <laughs> kicking. <laughs> no kicking. <laughs> there was no kicking. There Absolutely was just no me kicking. yelling obscenities and then apologizing. <laughs> yeah, it's a lifetime ban for kicking yeah, a corn maze. right. <laughs> don't kick in the corn maze they'll probably don't have that sign up next year You're just oh, for sure. hiding in the corn and kicking people as they walk by trying to <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> just that's attack fun. people yeah no that's not funny don't do that please let's don't definitely attack have people, people get not... like karate chopped you get not you, allowed. Uh, you'll get kicked in the funny bone, or your toes get stepped on, or you're gonna get punched in the throat. <laughs> no. I'm well, okay. 
picture it. You're walking through a corn maze and somebody mm-hmm. jumps out at you and it's kind of dark oh, and you're expecting yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. not a human defense. being. Yeah, defend, <laughs> of course not a human. <laughs> no. Humans don't hide in fucking corn no. mazes. Are you kidding? You are expecting an alien. I was expecting yeah. an alien. 100%. So okay. I'm going to defend myself. That's why yes. I said throat punch. That makes more sense. I was kind of going from yeah. like just like um, an, an assault thing sure you know like oh yeah. somebody's gonna punch you in the throat i was like what but defense wow. defense completely against aliens yes <laughs> like, defense against the corn aliens oh fuck aliens man anyway no thank you anyway oh my god that's um, i did want to say i talked to my brother a little bit about my dad's episode to kind of see like i was like do you remember him telling us that story and he was like yeah, I remember it, but I definitely remember it being like it had some alien undertones to it. Really? Yeah. So yeah. I was like, because I kind of remember that too. Like something was like, and maybe that's like our only understanding of paranormal when we were younger was aliens. Mm, but sure. it was like, you know, but I don't think so. So anyway, that was like, ooh, yeah, I guess I kind of remember it being a little bit alien y too Yuck. but i was just another perspective on that story that i was like yeah no thanks yuck no thank you no thank you next next please i don't like next that story please. at all yuck i know have you guys gone to the corrals yet no no are you gonna did christopher was he like let's go right now yes yes he did <laughs> i was like he fucking did i know he did yeah, I he wanted he to. Did. And He's we like, have the car that would make it up there if the gate was open. So yeah, it, that's... <sighs> we'll see. We'll see if what you happens. do it, you have to take tons of photos. It has to be... Oh, you have we'll to go take... at like 11 we'll a.m. Just... I'll just take a video. We'll just yeah. video the whole thing. Ooh, and no. then we'll speed the bar... speed the boring parts up. Ooh, that just gave me full on chills. <laughs> the, chiver... the, 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 the shivers. The shivers. Yeah, but if we go at 11, we won't see anything. So that's why we got to go at night. No, you don't want to go. See, but I ghost. would. That's what I would do. That's what. I, but that. But that's what I would do. Oh, you're insane. I am not. I. It's just what I would do. <laughs> I mean, agree to disagree. <laughs> Stop making me snort. Stop it. That's twice. That's twice. I love it. I love it so much. I love it. Uh, all right well do we want to tell our friends what we're talking about today even though they've seen the episode title and you should probably know by now you should probably know we're gonna actually talk about aliens <laughs> i'm just kidding we're not talking about aliens. throat punching psych <laughs> <laughs> aliens on the cord just kidding we're not talking about aliens today no we're gonna today. talk about Troy. <laughs> was such a lag. I was waiting for you to say it. Ne- negative. I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Okay, this time you no, know. It's perfect. I'm not <laughs> editing it. I'm not changing it. I'm just gonna fucking leave it. <laughs> We've never had a better take in our lives. Uh, Troy. Uh, <laughs> like, don't sound excited. Well, I kept waiting for you to, like, say something. And I, I thought maybe there was a lack. <laughs> Uh, I was like, bro, fill the silence, cringe. He's going to say it. Nope, he's going to say it. <laughs> nope, I was waiting for you. Nope. <laughs> Cross communications. I should have, like, pointed at you or something. Like, we've been doing this away, for Karen. a year. It's nothing, you guys. <laughs> we just don't know what we're doing. Oh, still. my gosh. Still. Oh, my God. We have no idea what we're doing. Ooh, no that joke. made me cry of joy. Tears. Yeah, we're talking about Troy. Yeah, we are. Um, this is our third episode on Troy, right? Mm-hmm. 
third episode. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you missed any of our previous episodes, we are spending season two um, slowly working through um, the lore, the history, the myth that is Troy. Yeah. We're going over all the people, places, things, events. Everything you need to know. In some detail. Yeah. So we're still kind of doing some character building because we have some pretty important people that we're going to meet today. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're getting close. We're kind of getting close to the end of who's who and what's happened to lead up to Tr- Troy. The start going, of the war. The start of the war. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, again, just so you guys know, our reference and our one and only source for these episodes are the books from Stephen Fry. And this is one book, not books, just um, Troy by Stephen Fry. So mm. if you want to look up our source or if you want to check out the source material yourself, if we stir something inside of you and you need to know more, we love that for you and check it out. The book is great. It has some really good pictures, has some really good art, and his writing is just, like, we, I don't use a lot of what he says because what he says is so uniquely him. Yeah. Um, it's great. So yeah. if you have a chance to pick it up, do it. There's one point I was reading in what I'm covering today, and he's talking about all these families and this betrayal and this incest thing, and mm-hmm. it was all of this, and he's like, there's a sentence he's like if you kept up i'm very proud of you or something like that <laughs> you know, he like he like breaks the fourth wall in his book yeah and like a- addresses the reader mm-hmm. and it's just um it's great it's great yeah and if if reading's not your jam and you prefer an audiobook he mm. narrates his own book and he does all of the voices and yeah. it's worth it so good so it is so good so good all right, who are we talking about today? Haley. I think I think it's you. I think you're going to go. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the way that we got it Have set it up structured. Guys, yeah, we still don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Go for it. Take it away. I'm all Take ears. it away, Aaron. I yeah. Come on, you know that Harry Potter line, don't you? Uh Yeah. yeah. No. Oh. No. I well, just know the pinchers. Yeah. Those um things. yeah. Well now I can't leave it be. So it's because it's in the third one when they're driving the bus, the night bus, and the right. little sunken head is like, Take it away, Ern. Take it away, Ern. So anyway. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Really Thank important. You for the clarification. That really important. important clarification for you today. Okay. We are going to start with our next person, key player in the Trojan War, and maybe the one, the only reason for a Trojan War, some may Mm. argue, is Helen. Who is Helen? We're not talking about that yet. We're going to (laughs) backtrack. Psych again. Psych. Just kidding. No, I we're just not talking to... about that. We're talking about aliens of the card. Just kidding. We're not covering it at all. <laughs> um, okay, so when I just kind of want to recap where we last left Paris because I'm mm. telling everybody's stories succinctly and together. So, um, who is Helen? When we last left Paris, we he uh, we talked to, when we talked about Troy. Um, he was be like he decided to become a prince of Troy mm-hmm. and uh decided he was gonna learn about the kingdoms, learn about his family. Priam is educating him personally on all of this information, teaching him the ways of the world and the politics of this area in the Mediterranean. And he is telling him about his aunt. Aunt fuck, what's her name? I can't remember either. Uh, Hesione. To, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's her. Cool. I love that. My notes were right there. Um, his aunt, Hesione, who's Priam's older sister, who sacrificed 
herself to save Priam when Heracles was there. You know, all this stuff. Um, he's telling her, he's telling him about where she lives and like the kingdom that she lives in. And then he's kind of covering different areas and he eventually gets to Sparta and he's like, yes, yeah, Sparta, this is where King Menelaus and his wife, Helen rule Sparta together. And Paris hears this, loses his mind. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to go save my aunt Hesione from her capture and bring her home. And Priam was like, amazing. Thank you so much. You're such an angel. No. He's no, not. He's not. Um, and so, yeah, he's off to find this Helen who we know nothing about yet. Mm -hmm. So how did she become the beauty that is still talked about to this day? Um, Helen has some interesting family history and there's actually two stories about how she was conceived. Um, so the first story is her mother and father, to Tydarus and Lydia. So Tydarus is the king of Sparta and Lydia is the queen of Sparta. And one day they were just getting busy on the riverbank like you do. And he had finished and left his wife laying beautifully naked in the sun on the riverbank. And was he was headed back um while she's laying there um relaxing in the sun she is joined by her husband again so he like she's like kind of closing her eyes and laying there and she's very surprised she's like wait a minute you don't usually go twice you know, yeah if you know what i mean and so she's just like, uh, what's happening? And she opens her eyes and she sees white feathers and she is being accosted by a swan. And accosted is a nice way of putting it. I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, what the fuck would you do? A giant swan on top yeah. of you? That's crazy. Yeah. And that's like raping you. Yeah. Not, like, not, it's like, not nice. No. 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 Um, so who else could this be than our favorite horn dog, Zeus? Mm -hmm. Um, he was, you know, up in the clouds, being Zeus, doing Zeus things, looks down, sees this, this beautiful naked woman on the riverbank and decides that that's his, uh, enough, enough consent for him. Yeah. He's just going to hop, hop on down there. And so he decides that he's going to go down there. Um as a swan and there have been other stories of him changing into a bull an alligator a mouse and those are the last two aren't true but it's all kinds of things he's turned into to have sex with women and so because i don't know if this is explicitly true but i think that this is the case it's because he can like say oh that wasn't me no oh, right. How could I? That's not yeah. me. No, um, I would never. Not, not I. Not I. Uh, because Hera, the goddess of all gods, is uh, insanely jealous and also the goddess of marriage. So she's like, to be cheated on is just the worst. It's just the worst. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. E da -da -da -da. Da, where am I? I will say the the, the picture. I don't know who did this oh, art. So pretty. On page 65. Yeah. If you didn't know what it was depicting, that picture is gorgeous. I know. It's I so know. beautiful. L Lydia looks so beautiful. And like yeah. the swan looks so soft and fluffy. Not rapey at all. Not rapey. Not a rapey swan at all. That's not a rapey swan. Um, yeah. <laughs> so enough talking about the rapes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I've written here. <laughs> <laughs> so there is this happenstance where you can conceive based two babies from one egg and two different fathers. And in this case, 
she had been impregnated by her husband as well as Zeus. Mm -hmm. And not only was she having twins, she was having two sets of twins. So that's kind of the crazy part. I mean, mm-hmm. all of it's crazy. But all of never it's crazy. Mind. Yeah. Um, so then Forget- you have two sets of twins who have two sets of fathers, right? Or two fathers. So when the, the time comes to have the babies, she doesn't deliver babies. She lays two eggs. Um, and in the first egg uh, are born Castor and Clemenestra. And then <laughs> I wrote whatever her name is. I couldn't remember <laughs> Clemenestra's name. Um, and then Polydeuces or Pollux and Helen are born from the other egg. Um, and so all of these twins are considered siblings. They're all, mm-hmm. you know, together all the time and they're all very look- good looking. Everybody's good looking. Like, not Helen good looking, but everybody's good looking. Everybody's. Ooh, time for bed. It's time for bed. Um, So I'll come back to this in a minute. The second story is that Zeus turned into a swan and forced himself on the goddess Nemesis um, and chased her through the woods where she was turning into creatures one after another trying to get away from it. She'd turn into a fish and swim away or she'd turn into a uh, doe and run. And, you, you know, she eventually turns into a goose and he turns into a swan. And then they are, they do it, forced to do it. Um, it. And he is finally able to catch her better as a swan, which she is a goose. And it's good to know that Nemesis is actually the goddess of divine retribution. Mm, So possibly Helen's mother being the goddess Mm -hmm. of divine retribution. Um, So she ends up laying an egg. Helen is born, but then she gives her to the queen of Sparta, Lydia, who raises her with her other three children as her own. Um, So regardless, either way, Helen is the daughter of Zeus, which this was news to me. I did not know this outside of this book. So yeah. yeah. Um, Back to them all being hot. There's no really better way to put it. (laughs) (laughs) They're all hot. But Helen's beauty is no match. Um, Her sisters would be, she'd be completely attractive and totally desirable and sought after if Helen wasn't in the picture. Um, But still, she's very beautiful. Um, Don't know what that sentence says. Oh, I was talking to myself. (laughs) Um, So all these twins are now growing up together. And there is the story of the king of Athens being coerced or like convinced by his friend to actually kidnap Helen when she's 12 years old. Right. Yeah. And it was like a lot of interchangeable characters. And I don't really understand the point of that kind of one off except yeah. that Helen got kidnapped mm-hmm. um, and she's actually rescued by her brothers and they're actually they have a name Pollux and Castor um, called the Dioscuri so they come to her rescue and bring her home so uh, maybe it's going to show that like that twin connection or they're like looking out for her is mm-hmm. super important mm-hmm um, so as she becomes a young woman and her beauty starts to flourish, um, so did her prospects. And now the far reaches of Greece have all come to hear of her beauty and um, grace. She's also super funny and super personable and very fun to be around. So not only is she like gorgeous, but she's got a great personality. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who is this? Um <laughs> Um, so all across the Mediterranean, people are talking about her beauty and Helen. Helen. <laughs> Helen. Helen. You're so amazing. 
Ah, she's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. <laughs> it reminds me of Kung Fu Panda, the last one. Ah, oh, who is that? Oh, she's amazing. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Who's saying that? <laughs> you are. Stop it. Oh, you are. <laughs> That's my favorite so one besides That's the so... first one. <laughs> oh, I know. I do love that one. I cry in the second one every time. Every oh. time. I'm sure I cry. When they I cry all the time. So it's when hard they for me off to remember all the pandas. distinctly when I cry or don't cry. <laughs> oh. <right>. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I was in um downtown yesterday getting my tattoo. Mm-hmm. And I accidentally was in the middle of a crosswalk. I was being a total asshole, but it was diagonal. And so I just wasn't looking at where the crosswalk started. I was looking at like the this corner and mm-hmm. this lady walked by and I was like in the middle. And then there was someone behind me. So I couldn't back up. So I was like trapped, you know, I was just the asshole in the middle of the crosswalk. And she like walks around me and she like hits my car and then flipped me off. And I was like, and she just walked by and I was like, oh my God. Like I'm so sorry. I like I was like I know I'm sorry. It's there with me. I'm like I'm bad. I'm so and then I just, like started sobbing because I oh, can't no. handle any kind of confrontation or people being mad at me. So, just so you know, I'm super sensitive, baby. It's fine. Back to Troy. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. I'm just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> so. The king of Sparta is stressing because he's like, I know that no matter what I do, someone is going to be pissed off that, you know, someone that like I didn't pick them. So mm-hmm. he's stressing about suitors for Helen and doesn't really know what to do. So he decides that, um, you know, um, oh my gosh. I got distracted. I wrote bullshit and I'm trying to say why, why I said bullshit, but, um, he's stressed out. He's freaking. He doesn't know what to do. He needs to convince, he needs to convince everybody that there's no need to go to war over Helen. Like I'm just, we'll figure it out. Um, Mm -hmm. and then, so at this point, everybody starts coming to Sparta, like to, stake their claim or put in their name or try to become her suitor or, you know, just yeah, can you imagine present. all that? Like, no, thank you. All that in your all castle that and you have to feed all of them, all that like tension and like, yeah, oh, yep. that'd be a lot. <clears throat> yeah. And so it's like a big event. It's mm-hmm. a big party. There are a ton of people vying for her hand. So, um, one of the guests in attendance is Odysseus of Ithaca, and he doesn't seem interested, but he's here with all these people. So um, Odysseus is known for being very uh, cunning and clever and very well versed in politics. So he has some good ideas um, and he's very good counsel. So one night he's sitting talking with the king uh, and he was King's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And Odysseus is like, well, I have an idea. And the king's like, literally, lay it on me. He's like, well, I have one request, and I will happily help you figure out this problem. He's like, anything. If you can figure out how to not start a war, like, lay it on me. So he um, says, hey, your niece, Penelope, is betrothed to some prince somewhere and I'm in love with her and she's in love with me and she doesn't want to marry this dude. So, and you're the guy to say that that marriage is off. So can you please make it happen? And he was like, sure, no problem. You fix my problem. I'll fix your problem. And she'll be on the next <laughs> boat with you to Ithaca. Easy. So Odysseus gives him an idea. So the next day, the king has an announcement. They're like, oh, he's finally picking. Yay. They, we're going to like get to go home and then it's going to be great. Um, everybody's like, I hope it's me. I hope it's me. And ooh, Helen. Helen. Ooh. Helen. Um, ooh. I don't know when she got so, spooky, but. <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, <laughs> so at this point they decide he makes an announcement and says, we're doing a lottery. And to gain a ticket or put your name into the lottery, 
you have to pay a price. And everybody's like, oh, what? Gold, treasure? And he's like, no, not gold or treasure. (laughs) You have to swear an oath that if you don't win the lottery, that you will, you and your armies and your kingdoms will always stand behind Helen and her chosen husband or her lottery winning husband (laughs) and support them. (laughs) So that way they are like, so that way they're not like, they can't hurt Helen. Right. Right. And so if they hurt Helen's husband, they're hurting Helen. Yeah. Cause it's not, I mean, if it's a lottery, it's not, you know, it's up to chance. Yes, exactly. So, um, once you sign this binding co- contract or make this oath in front of all these people, you can put your name in. So everybody starts kind of putting their names in. Lots of different um, candidates. The one of mention that I know specifically that's going to show up later in the story is Patroclus, who is related in some other ways, um, is present at this event as well, but is part of swearing in this oath. Um, so they draw the lottery and the winner is Menelaus, who is a promising young prince. I think they're considered princes. They're just Mm -hmm. cast out of their kingdom right now. And that's a whole other story that all might, I have to come back to because I didn't cover Menelaus and Agamemnon very deeply, but Mm -hmm. Agamemnon is Menelaus's older brother who has plans on taking back their kingdom and they're going to win this fight that they're getting ready to do and whatnot. So he's happy for his brother, but then he's kind of not. So he goes up to the king, Agamemnon goes up to the king of Sparta and says, you know, hey, <clears throat> I would have been the better pick. And the king's like, yo, you swore an oath and this is your brother. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm happy for my brother. (laughs) Not doing anything, but I'm the oldest and I'm going to take back the kingdom. Like I could have made your daughter a queen. It almost instantly. And he's like, hmm, you know, okay. Well, have you looked at my daughter? Um, What's her name? Clemenestra. Clemenestra. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I was really focused on marrying Helen and making sure she was settled before I shifted to Clymenestra, but she is eligible and she is not offered to anyone and she's beautiful. You know, right. how do you feel? You, you know, your, your brother is marrying Helen and you can marry Clymenestra. And then, you know, we have this really great, um, like, what is it? Alliance? Union? Alliance, thank you. It's like, a fucking, mm-hmm. what word is this? What word am I trying to say? Alliance. So, um, Agamemnon agrees. So, him and Clymenestra are married, and Menelaus and Helen are married. So, Agamemnon goes to win this war and take back his kingdom. Can't remember what the kingdom's name is. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> and, um, Clymenestra is made queen of said place. Um, is it? I can find it really fast. Uh, I feel like it's like Minotaur. Like Mena, Menatus or something. Mycenae. Mycenae. There you go. So yeah, he, makes her he, the, tells, the, he tells Tyndareus and Odysseus that he's going to like go and drive his uncle and his cousin from his kingdom because they stole it from him and all this stuff. And he does. He and does. he does. Fucking, he fucking kicks ass and takes he a bunch of other well. shit. Yeah, well, and he's like, he, he's skilled in war. He's skilled in yeah. what he's doing. You know, he yep. was ready for this. So, mm-hmm. Clymenestra becomes the queen of Mycenae. And then um, Tyndareus decides, hey, you know, Menelaus, you are young. My daughter is young. You guys can just take over the throne. So he steps down Mm -hmm. and they take over as being king and queen of Sparta. So, yeah. Right? I did it. What? What? Um, I know. And everybody is 
just fine, living their lives, happy as can be. Because like Helen was thought Menelaus was handsome. Like they got yes, along. She they got was, along. She was actually really well. her her choice. Mm-hmm. Um, of yeah. all the people to be pulled, so it was like mm-hmm. it wasn't like a. F- I mean, it was forced, no. but it wasn't a like negative thing. Yeah. So yeah, she probably wasn't like terribly upset. No. She got to be clean of her own city, you know, like. Right. She didn't have to go anywhere else. Mm Mm-hmm. It worked out. Yeah. And then this is all before Paris's boat arrives. Mm. Paris. Paris. Helen. Paris. He's fine. And that's what I have on Helen. Perfect. The beauty, the queen of Sparta. Helen. Helen. All right, so the next person we're going to talk about is another big player, um, very big player in all of this. V I um, P. Yeah, what you just said. <laughs> so it's been quite a few years, and uh, Thetis and Peleus have had six children together. So it's been quite a few years. Yeah. Um, They have had six boys, but each one of them disappeared early in their infancy. And Peleus doesn't really ask Thetis any questions because he can tell that she's clearly distressed. She's very upset that her babies are disappearing. Um, He's not understanding really what is going on with their baby boys and it is it was common for babies to not really live out of infancy you know way back in the day it was really common for babies to not survive so he doesn't it's not in his nature to really like push her for more details so thetis finds herself pregnant again with their seventh son seventh baby seventh she's pregnant for the seventh time right and she goes to her father's palace, uh, the sea god Narius, and she's talking to him. And while they're visiting over crab cakes, she mentions, it's so very upsetting. I've done everything right. And she's kind of mumbling to herself. And I, I, I'm sure I've done everything right, but the babies still burn. And her father looks up and he's like, burning babies. And she says, I'm going to live forever. And forever is so long. If I have a son with Peleus, he's going to be mortal. And I'm going to lose him. Before I even get to know him, he's going to be old and decrepit and he's going to die. And I'm not even going to get to know him. He's going to be gone in the blink of an eye. And I, you know, I've accepted that this is what's going to happen with Peleus, but I don't want my son to die. I want my son to live forever. Mm-hmm. And her father kind of looks at her confused and he's like, well, any son that you have with a mortal man is going to be mortal. So like, what's your point? <laughs> and she's like, right. But not if I make him immortal. The Oceanids told me that there's a way to do that. And they assured me that what I'm doing is right, but I'm something keeps happening. And her father looks at her and he says, you consulted Oceanids on this. (laughs) (laughs) They don't know anything. Like, what did they tell you? And she said, well, to immortalize a human child, I just need to smear him with ambrosia and then hold him over a fire. And... I've done this. I've done this exact thing. I've done it six times. But every time I do it, when I hold my baby over the fire, the baby screams and burns up and dies. Ugh. Well, of course. I know it's terrible. This is Very nice. Yeah, Thank you. Was it a mixed berry? Yeah. Very nice. Excellent choice. Thank you. Finally. So. The service around here. <laughs> it's impeccable. <laughs> So he's like, well, of course your baby's burned up, you silly, silly girl. And she's crying and she's like, but what have I done wrong? 
And he, she's like, well, you didn't do it wrong exactly. You just missed a step. So first, what you need to do is make your baby invulnerable. And like the look of shock on her face. And she's like, oh, I need to make him invulnerable so that he doesn't burn up and die. Like it clicks in her mind. Right. And so she's like, well, but how do I do that? What, what steps do I need to take? And he's like, you just need to go to the river sticks, give him a dip, make sure he's fully immersed in the waters, and then do the ambrosia and the fire. So soon after that, Thetis goes into labor and gives birth to a beautiful baby boy, and they name him Ligarin. So she's hugging, she's hugging Peleus, and she's so excited. And she says, all's going to be, it, it's all going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. He's going to grow up. Look at how beautiful he is. And Peleus is like, this is great. I'll sacrifice a bull and maybe it'll be better this time. Maybe the gods will be merciful. So that night when everyone's asleep, Thetis takes the baby from the crib and she sneaks out of the castle and she actually makes her way to the nearest entrance to the underworld. And she goes to the river sticks and she ne she's kneeling on the banks and she's holding the baby by his heel between a finger and a thumb. And she dips him in the water and she holds him there until she counts to 10. She pulls him out, wraps him in a blanket, and she goes back to the palace. She lays him on a table and she's, she's smearing him with ambrosia and she tells him like, you're invulnerable now. Nobody can hurt you. Nobody can break your bones. You'll never get sick. You're never going to get like, plague or poisoned. Um, and now I'm going to make you immortal. So she takes him to the hearth. He's covered in ambrosia and she's holding him out in the flame and she whispers, it's going to be perfect this time. You're never going to die. And behind her, Peleus starts screaming. He comes in and he sees what she's doing and he starts screaming, no, and snatches the baby from her. And she's like, you evil woman, what are you doing? What are you right. doing? Like, can you imagine you come in and you right. find your wife holding your infant over the fire? Well, and now you like the last six of your no. kids are all snapping. Like you're realizing what's happened, you right? You realize oh, no. what ha what's happened. Yeah. yeah. And she cries out, you don't understand. Give him back to me. And he says, I understand very well what you're doing. You are a monster and you need to get out. You need to leave this palace at once. And she kind of looks at him and she stands up tall and she says, I will not leave. You leave. You go. <laughs> and Peleus just holds the baby close and he's glaring at her and telling her what a monster she is. And she says, just give him back to me. You don't understand what I'm doing. Peleus shouts in her face that she needs to leave. She screams in frustration, stamps her foot, and she decides that then and there that she, this was ridiculous. She never should have involved herself with mortals. She has better things to do than stand here and argue with him. Right. And she disappears in a flash of light and she's just gone. So taking the baby in his arms, Peleus leaves the castle and he goes to the cave where Chiron is. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he talks to Chiron and he says, you're very wise. You've raised other children. Um, will you please take my son until he's 10 and raise him and teach him? And then I'll come back for him when he's 10 years old. <laughs> Poor Chiron. I know. <laughs> he's like, yes. It's like, I just want to be I'll, a lonely. I know. I, I just like to be alone. Hill. Just let me live in, in my, my cave. cave in peace. Just doing centaur stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't happen. So, no. Chiron agrees to take the baby. And he immediately changes the name from the Garin to Achilles. So... Over the next 10 years, uh, Achilles would spend time learning music, poetry, history, science, rhetoric. And when he's old enough, he actually goes back to his father's palace. And on top of all of the knowledge that he has, he learns how to use a javelin, how to throw a discus. Um, he learns how to be a good charioteer. Um, he sword fights and wrestles. And um, he also learns the art of war. I don't know what happened to our thing. What do you mean? Your face is gone, but oh. that's fine. I can see. That's you. fine. 
I just made, wanted to make sure it was fine. Okay. Um, so by the time that Achilles is 11, he is so fast that nobody can actually catch him. He's faster than any mortal that's ever lived. So he is graceful. He's agile. And it kind of lends him this like glamour and glow around him. And everyone kind of starts to call him golden Achilles. So Mm -hmm. when he's 10, um, and he recently come back to his father's palace. Um, there's a new arrival as well. Um, it's a young boy named Patroclus. Patroclus. I always say it wrong. Um, and he was there because he had accidentally killed a child in a fit of rage. And had oops. to grow up exiled. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Grow up exiled to atone for his crimes. He couldn't stay where... He couldn't say with his family. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So despite this one off incident, he is described as a very balanced, kind, thoughtful young young man. And um, Patroclus and Achilles grow up together and they are virtually inseparable. They are always together. They're training together. They're learning together. Always together. Mm-hmm. So that is Achilles. Um, real quick, we're going to jump back to Troy real quick. Uh, so like you said, the last time we left Paris, he was, um, with his father. He's really into being a prince. He's settling in. His father's teaching him about, you know, the surrounding area, politics, countries, and he finds out about Helen. (laughs) So, of course, like you said, he comes up with this plan and he's going to bring his aunt home um, from Salamis, King Priam's. Mm. So stoked. He's so excited. This is such a good idea. I'm going to have the shipbuilders build you a beautiful new ship. Um, We're going to have six smaller ships that are built to kind of act as your protective envoy to make sure that nothing happens because pirates... And the day comes that they set sail and they're all gathered at the dock and Cassandra is there. And if you remember, (gasps) she is the one that is cursed and she's screaming, don't let him sail. He's not going to Salamis. He's going to go to Sparta. Just sink the ships because if he returns, it's going to be all of our deaths. Just let him drown. Nobody hears her. Nobody no. pays any attention to her. Oh, and instead, so I know it's so sad. <laughs> Everyone wishes them well, get hopes they have a safe voyage, that Poseidon is kind, and the ships head out into the open sea. Oh my God. As soon as they're away from Troy, Paris tells the crew that they're not going to rescue his aunt, they're going to Sparta. So they arrive in Sparta. And King Menelaus, he's now king. He welcomes the party with open arms. They have parties. They're very hospitable. Mm -hmm. Paris presents the king with all of the gifts that Priam thought was going to get his sister back. And King Menelaus thinks, like, this is the start of trade between our two countries. Like, these are two big kingdoms they're huge troy and sparta that's a big deal so feasting and celebration and games and all of this go on for nine days wow okay (laughs) on the ninth day helen's brothers get a message from acadia that they need to leave in a hurry there's something happened and they need to go Mm -hmm. so the very next day a message comes for menelaus and his grandfather is died and he Mm -hmm. actually needs to attend the funeral so he leaves the next day The city is unattended. Nobody's there. So Paris loots the palace and abducts Helen. (gasps) Yeah. They also take Helen's new baby boy, Nicostratus, and her enslaved attendant, Athera, I believe her name is. But they leave her older daughter, Hermione. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. And maybe Nicostratus was too little to be left. I mean, honestly. Um, So in the book, it's really interesting because Stephen Fry brings up a question that I've thought about a lot reading this book. Did Helen want to go? Or 
Like, did she actually fall in love with Paris? Right. Because there are some parts of the story that are like, oh, right. Um, Aphrodite made it so that she fell in love with him and trying to keep her end of the bargain with the golden apple of discord, all of this. Right. Or was she actually kidnapped and seized from her home, put on a ship and like taken away? Did her best. Yeah. Did her best. Yeah. With what she, I mean, that's a pretty shitty situation that you find yourself in. Yeah. So it's hard to know. I mean, it's hard to know what actually, like how she actually felt about it. I don't know. Right. Um, so as they're sailing away, I just wrote Paris is such a dick. (laughs) He is. I can't stand. I hate his character. There was a time that I was like, oh, Paris. It was probably when I watched Troy. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say it was Orlando. You feel, you feel bad for him. Well, in in that movie, it's not, Helen's not abducted. She no. is like she is a runaway. She's, as she like wants they to are go. protecting her, right? Yeah. Because she didn't so really want to be different... married to Menelaus. Like, mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, who knows? Anyway, on the way home, they stop in Cyprus, Egypt, and Phoenicia. Mm-hmm. And when they're actually at their last stop in Phoenicia, the king greets him. There's a lot of hus- hospitality. There, he's very kind. He's very excited that he's here. Greets him. And he's repaid with being murdered, and his treasury is plundered. Paris what is the a fuck? dick. Yeah, Paris is a dick. He takes all of the treasure and he loads his ships up even more and sails to Troy. So he arrives. Yeah, he arrives home. Priam and his wife Hecuba and their family are totally astonished to see Helen and not their aunt Hesione. Um, they are charmed by Helen. They think she's beautiful. They're stunned by her beauty, but she's, like you said, she's funny. She's charming. She's very sweet. Right. And there's also six ships full of treasure. Like, you're not going to say, no, where, where did this come from? You know, oh my God, you're just right? going to kind of turn, you're just going to kind of turn an eye and not really, you know. Don't think about it. I thought you were better than that, Priam. I also thought he was better than that. Maybe he didn't ask. Maybe he, I don't know. You'd have to know, though. The wife have to know. of the king of Sparta shows up with treasure. <laughs> and I'm yeah. sure that the other treasure from um, Phoenicia is also has, like, their sigils and stuff on it. So he's got to know what his son does. Yeah. He, he's got to know. Yeah. So... Um, anyway, uh, Paris's bride, they got married at some point somewhere. What? I don't know when it doesn't, it doesn't tell us where it doesn't tell us when, but they got married and she's very warmly welcomed into the Royal family. She's, they welcome her with open arms. So they have a dinner one evening, family dinner. And of course, Cassandra comes in. And she's screaming at them. She's wailing and sobbing. And she's telling them that Helen's presence is going to cause the death and destruction of every single one of them. If they don't put her on a ship and send her back home. And at the head of the table, Priam lifts a cup of wine and says warmly, here's to Helen. And that's it. That's That's insane. That's insane. (laughs) I haven't it's gotten terrible. that far, so like I haven't read that far yet. So <laughs> it was new. <laughs> yeah, I when I read that he sailed home and killed the other king, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, like why did he? That's make why other I wrote he's stops? such a dick. <laughs> yeah, like one bitch. You've been in Prince kid- for three months, kidnapping months? someone's wife, looting their treasury, and I don't know how big. I don't know how big Sparva is compared to Troy. Probably pretty good. I mean, it's yeah. pretty good sized. Oh my like, god! Pretty, pretty big balls. Pretty pretty. pretty well, bold. like his grandpa died, mm-hmm. and he's just like leaving. Yeah. Oh, good opportunity. 
Well, you're grieving. I'm just going to take all your all your money. Just going to take your son and your wife and all your money. Yeah, his new baby boy. Yeah, that's probably why he left up Hermione because maybe she's a girl. Probably. Look. Yeah, I mean, what you think? Myths would you know get a grip, but. You would think. Here we are. Nope. Yeah, right. Anyway, so there you go. Wild. Thank you. That was great. You're welcome. All right, guys. Thank you for being here as always. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook for all of our podcast updates and information. And come chat with us. Come chat with us. You can send us an email at more than this podcast at gmail.com if you would like to chat with us via email. We are always open to a new email message from you to us. Mm -hmm. We'd love it. Uh, Wherever you podcast, we also podcast if you have a minute and you can just rate and subscribe. Um, If you have more time on your hands, just hanging out, Mm -hmm. leave a review. Just gives the little pod a little bump. Yep. And as always, we're always looking for more curious friends. So tell your friends, tell your families and tell your nerds. Mm. Tell everyone you know. Until next time, stay curious. Bye. Bye. Hold on. Right.